Today on Unpacked. Satanism is very much a, a religion about the, the earthly, the, the carnal. So it is very unsatanic to kill. When I identified myself within the pages of this book and I could not lie to myself any longer. And yes, that is kind of how I be became or became aware that I am a Satan. The South African Satanic Church has a reverend and he is here to tell his story. Let's unpack. It was in 2016 that Rian Svigelar read and resonated with the Satanic Bible. And after meeting several other Satanists that included co-founder Audrey Norton on social media, that they started the first Satanic Church in South Africa in 2020. The church has since faced backlash with several accusations about their intentions. Nantes Ogump is one of the members at the South African Satanic Church. Both are here to share their stories. Let's unpack. So joining us via video con is the Reverend of the South African Satanic Church, and that is Rian. Rian, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be on your show. Now, you know, the, in, in such a deeply religious country, especially Christianity in a country like ours, some would say that uh, the church that you are with is extremely, not just um, taboo, but controversial. Well, certainly some people might think so, yes. Mm. So, Rian, the concept of a Satanist church is actually not unique to South Africa. You guys are just the first ones that started a church in South Africa and went public about it. So, no, the South African Satanic Church was founded last year, co-founded last year in February by Audrey Norton and myself after we felt that um, there's no representation for Satanism in South Africa. Mm. So that was first and foremost the reason why we founded the church and why we took our beliefs publicly. And also we, we couldn't sit by idly as Satanism was discussed in the media wrongfully yes. and uh, Satanists were accused of all sorts of hideous things going on in the country. So we felt very strongly about that and um, being Satanists for almost five years at the time, we felt it's time that actual real Satanists would come forward mm. and speak up publicly and say, um, we're sorry, but this is what Satanism is um, and this is who we are. So first and foremost, that was the intent and, and why we took the church publicly. Mm, mm. And then also importantly, we wanted to create a space where other Satanists could come and meet other Satanists and also for the networking purposes. So I also think it's very important to mention that we are not out to convert other people to Satanism. And I, and I think that's where a lot of the fear comes in from, from other religions or from other people is the fear that we're trying to convert other people to Satanism. Mm. And I mean, we you, you can't make somebody a Satanist. And I can yeah. maybe speak about that a little bit later. Um, one is born a Satanist. You, you can't make someone a Satanist. So maybe on that note, for, for you to be able to explain somebody is born a Satanist, what is a Satanist? And then explain to us how you are born a Satanist and it's not a choice that you, you know, make. Sure. So a Satanist is someone that since they can remember, they don't they don't relate to the status quo firstly. So these type of people might be considered a bit of an outsider. Mm -hmm. um, we don't necessarily um, I remember growing up, I never related to other people in what the way they saw the world or the fact that they were looking for their validation in an external being. And I also think that's another misconception about Satanism is that we worship um, the devil or that we see Satan as a being. Whereas if you read our dogma and if you, if you would read the Satanic Bible, you would certainly see that we only see Satan as an archetype. If, if you look at the original word Satan, mm -hmm. which comes from a Hebrew word, which means hearts of time, which translates to the opposer 
or the questioner. Mm. So a Satanist is someone that constantly questions the status quo, um, questions the way that the world operates, where people are marginalized or suppressed or told that the way that they're doing are they living is wrong mm. or shameful. So a Satanist is someone that constantly questions that. Okay. And secondly, a Satanist is someone that knows that we as humans, as individuals, we are in charge of what happens in our life. We can't appease or pray to an external being and ask for things to change. The Satanist is someone that takes responsibility for themselves and know that they need to make that change happen. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so in essence, um, from what I understand that you're saying, it's more of the person's character traits than it is a belief system that they choose to adopt when they are older. Yes. Okay. I could also say that when, when you first get in touch with satanic philosophy or when you, for instance, first read the satanic Bible, and that's was certainly the case with myself, you would immediately recognize yourself in that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing about your, yourself that you would need to change in order to become a Satanist. So the moment you read Satanic philosophy the first time or you get to know fellow Satanists, you would recognize yourself immediately or you won't, will not resonate with that. Mm -hmm. And therefore we, we know that not, Satanism is not a religion for everybody. It's, it's definitely a minority religion and it will always be that. But the, the mission of the church is simply to educate the public and to, to respond to allegations um, that, that arose from the moral panic of, in the 80s and 90s, um, especially in South Africa, to, to be able to respond to that and say, we're very sorry, but we can't be your scapegoats. Yes. Um, we don't believe in the devil. There's no such thing as the devil made me do it. Um, people need to take responsibility for their actions and for themselves. I think I understand a little, a little bit better about what you're saying. I would love for you to maybe share an example or two of a scenario or maybe something that your Bible uh, specifies that would make you recognize, oh, I definitely am a Satanist. Okay. So if we look at the nine Satanic statements, that's a very, very good way to know, um, and certainly for myself, like I said, five years ago, when I read the Satanic Bible the first time, and especially the Satanic Statements, I immediately knew, okay, this is what I've believed my whole life. I just couldn't put a term to it. Yeah. Because also I was coming from a very Afrikaans, Christian, very middle-class background. I also had preconceived ideas of what Satanism actually means. Mm. And therefore, I never thought, oh, I might be a Satanist until I actually read the Satanic Bible and I, I, I recognized myself in it. Um, would you mind if I read the statements? So, uh, no, not at all. Um, so it, just so far I understand correctly, the nine statements, would they almost be similar to the Ten Commandments? <sighs> In a way, yes. Okay. Um, in terms of what Satanism represents. Mm -hmm. um, so I can read them to you. Sure, go ahead. All right. So the first statement says, Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence. Mm -hmm. Statement number two says, Satan represents vital existence instead of spiritual pipe dreams. Mm. Number three, Satan represents underfelt wisdom instead of hypocritical self-deceit. Mm -hmm. Number four, Satan represents kindness to those who deserve it instead of love wasted on ingrates. Love Number wasted five, on? Ingrates. What, is, what does that word mean? Uh, that means someone who backstabs you. Oh, I got you. I got you. Okay. Someone who betrays you, who's not deserving of your love. Mm. Number five, Satan represents vengeance instead of turning the other cheek. Mm. Number six, Satan represents responsibility to the responsible instead of concern for psychic vampires. Mm. Number seven, Satan represents man as just another animal 
sometimes better, more often worse than those that walk on all fours, who because of his divine spiritual and intellectual development has become the most vicious animal of all. Mm. Number eight, Satan represents all of the so-called sins as they lead to physical, mental, and emotional gratification. Mm. And number nine is a bit tongue, tongue in the cheek. Satan has been the best friend the Christian church has ever had as he has kept it in business all these years. That is very tongue-in-cheek, obviously then saying that um, for, for Christianity to say, you know, the devil this, as in we are anti this or, or we are protecting from this, then that is the best friend that's kept Christianity in business, if I understand correctly. From a fear perspective, yes, because... Yes. Again, as we, as I mentioned, Satanists, we don't believe in an actual devil, where in Christianity, that is a, f- a fear tactic that is used to say that, well, there's this big bad um, thing out there with horns and a tail that's going to get you if you don't come to church and pay the church to keep yeah. you safe. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I understand what you're saying. I would like to find out, um, I think it was number eight about the sins. Are are we talking about the so-called seven deadly sins or are there other sins that are listed there? No, that is the ones, yes. Can you list them for me? Just especially for the viewers that don't know those sins. Sure. So that would be greed, um, lust, gluttony. Yes. Uh, I know greed, lust, gluttony, envy. Um, There's three others. I'm also eating a blank about yes. that at the moment. But the essence of the statement is that quite often the things that people feel guilty about or the the things that are used to judge other people yes. is in essence our human nature. Yes, yes. It's, it's, instead of rep- repressing those things, we celebrate it. And so the remaining three that uh, we had actually, uh, both of you and I forgotten, were pride, wrath and sloth. So what is number eight actually specifically speaking to those particular sins? It's, it's saying that in our true nature, in our human nature, mm. these, are who, that these sins represent who we are. Mm. And for some people in some belief systems, they feel they need to overcome those things or those things make you a bad person or a mm. sinful person where we would say, no, that that is our true human nature. And Mm. those things teach us us about other people and explains their behavior better. And it also teaches us us things about ourselves. So is that almost like um, the church is saying or the belief is that your true nature is what you describe as human nature. Humans will naturally be greedy. So instead of trying to aspire to be anything but that, we are embracing the part of you that is greed because it gets us to be real about who you are. Yes, and Satanism is ultimately about having the most fulfilling life on in, in a human form on the earthly incarnation. I got so you. also Satanism, Satanism says nothing about the afterlife because we allow people, whether they are members of our church or other Satanists or even, we allow people to believe what they would like about the afterlife. So we don't dictate, it's not a religion that dictates this is what the afterlife is about. Satanism is very much a a religion about the the earthly, the, the carnal, the material world. Yes, yes. So Rian, share with me, what was your childhood and upbringing like? Sure. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, grew up in a, what would be considered a very normal middle-class Afrikaans home with both parents, um, both parents being Christian still today, um, went to Sunday school. I've, I also think, and I, I thought about this quite often, as, as a child, I always knew that religion or spirituality would be my life and my career one day. And What, what made you know went, that? Just the the love for ritual, mm. especially the ritual part that that we had, um, 
you know, growing up in a church, also seeing and witnessing um, via the media how other religions practice their rituals. Mm. So that, in that way, I was, I was very interested um, in religion from a very young age. And briefly after school, I was involved in the Christian ministry, um, being a youth pastor myself. And um, after a year of doing that, I left the Christian faith and the Christian ministry. That was more than 16 years ago already. And then I went through basically a search. So a what, before you get there, why, why, what was your reason that you left? Did something specific happen that you said, this is not for me? Well, to be very honest with you, I studied the Christian Bible um, from Genesis 1, point, verse 1 yeah. up to Revelation 20, verse 22. Um, in depth, um, I read that the Christian Bible three times, and I found it that there's a lot of contradictions in it, and I couldn't find the answers. And I also I, I realized then that God is not something that is external. It's mm-hmm. not a it's not a man that sits in the sky with a beard and judges people. So that was absolutely in a nutshell what the tipping point for me was, and that's why I left the Christian faith. Mm, mm, mm. So what happened now after you you left the Christian faith and, you know, serving as a youth pastor? Well, also just to make it clear, um, it was more of a pastoral counsellor mm. um, for youth than a pastor preaching in front of a church, just yes. to, to make that clear as well. But... In regards, so after that, I went on quite a bit of a search um, again because I felt drawn to religion. I just didn't feel at home in that faith. Um, I didn't feel like I belong, and I certainly knew that I was not a Christian because of the Christian dogma. Mm. So then um, I started delving into metaphysics, and um, since 17 years ago up to today, um, I also do psychic work. Um, so that's what I, I got involved with after. Um, so I was still, in a way, counselling people spiritually, but more from a metaphysical point of view. Yes. And then through the years, I looked into various faiths, Buddhism, um, Hinduism, paganism for a while, um, even some of the African traditional religions. But again, never it never felt like I belonged in it. Yeah. And... I never never even thought of looking towards the occult or Satanism at the time. And one day, like I said, just over five years ago, a spiritual teacher of, of mine handed me a Satanic Bible and said, you might find this interesting. And immediately when I read it, I discovered that Satanism is not what I perceived it to be mm-hmm. when I was a Christian. And it's got nothing to do with the devil. And it's got nothing to, it's, it's about yourself and yes. us as human beings and being completely honest about our human nature and finding spiritual truths within that. Yeah. And one of the statements, again, it, it says, there's no, no space for spiritual pipe dreams, meaning that you have to be completely honest, honest with yourself. It's it's not about chanting and trying to be something that we are not. Because mm. it, it, it's almost like um, instead of the concept of faith, of believing in things unseen um, and trusting in things being how you see them, you want to work on what is real and what's in front of you. And inside of you, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that makes sense. So now you read this book and um, the, the Bible, and you recognize yourself in it. Yes, as, as most Satanists do. So the hundreds of Satanists that I've got to know since we officially launched the church, it's exactly the same story with them. So the moment they start reading Satanic philosophy, they would recognize themselves. And then, like I said, some people will not. They will, they will not feel comfortable with it, and they will reject it. And we are completely fine with that. We, as Satanists, we don't prosthesize, we, we don't evangelize. Mm. So we're certainly not saying that Satanism is a religion for everybody, yeah. because it certainly isn't. And we believe that people need to choose the religion that they feel comfortable with. So we know that some people have to be Christians and we feel it's right. We, there's a certain type of person that is a Christian, and we completely accept it. We, we have no problem with it, as also with other religions. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so or, and to 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 be sorry, if we were to say we don't agree with those religions and people shouldn't do it, that is a very unsatanic thing by definition. Mm. Because Satanism advocates the freedom to make choices. Mm, mm. I'm just curious then, how does, I mean, at, at what point you, you've read this Bible and you recognize yourself in it, were you now then looking for places to go and embrace what you've discovered about yourself? That is correct. And, and that was the main motivation for, for, for officially registering the South African Satanic Church because five years ago when I discovered this and I was seeking, there was absolutely no way to find like-minded individuals and to meet fellow people. Mm. So there was two organizations overseas, um, and like I said, we, we are not affiliated with them, mm. but they are, they are very good organizations. But the landscape that we have in South Africa when it comes to religion, it's very different than the landscape abroad. Mm. Our constitution is one of the best and the safest constitutions in the world. So our constitution was already supportive of religious freedom. Yeah. Satanism just needed a face and a voice. Mm. And as I mentioned also, there's been... I've met many Satanists, and they've certainly been Satanists way longer than myself. Yeah. But nobody wanted to come forward and say, we are Satanists, this is what Satanism looks like, and this is what we do. Mm. And I feel that was very important. And, and looking back five years ago, I would have certainly benefited from an organization like that myself. Mm. Because you meet all sorts of weird people if, if you don't know where to go. And because of all the misinformation and the propaganda that is out there about Satanism, it, it was very difficult at the time to find the, the truth and to find people who are sincere. Yeah, yeah. And I think, um, you know, uh, uh, the point that you're trying to raise is that it's not that you were the only one or the first one. The difference is you were willing to put your name and face forward to be a representative. So then how did you find yourself? I mean, you, you then go about starting the church, which um, um, you knew at the time the Constitution supported your, your religious freedom. Um, what was that process like for you having to actually start the church? Did you have to do registrations and that kind of thing? And how did you recruit members? So um, I just want to mention two things there. Um, I co-founded the church mm. um, with my co-founder, Audrey Norton. She's currently on maternity leave, so she can't be with us today. Yeah. But we co-founded the church after we, we were both we both knew we were Satanists already yes. four or five years ago. And we met a few other people who were also Satanists. None of those people were willing to step forward because yeah. of the high profile jobs they have. Um, many of our members in our church is medical professionals. Mm. Um, we have two LPs. We have famous actors, musicians, etc. Again, we never recruited we never had a recruitment drive. Satanism doesn't recruit. These people came forward to us. Mm. And after we went public, they said, thank you for doing this. Mm. We are not necessarily wanting to put our face out there, but to know that you are doing something for our religion. And we can support you in whichever way we can. So these people are more, uh, we see our members as collaborators. We, yes. we don't have disciples or followers. Mm. Anybody who refers to Satanists or our members as followers, again, don't understand what Satanism is. Yes, yes. And I think I understand uh, what you mean by uh, when you say that. So joining us via VideoCon is actually a member of the SA Satanic Church, and that is Nantes who is joining us. Nantes, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here and an honor. So are you also one of the members who felt that Rian uh, did a great thing by going public? Did you only join after Rian went public or were you a member of the church prior to that? I actually was on a big quest. Um, I also had a very big spiritual inclination, left yeah. the Christian faith um, as I 
grew up and uh, always knew there was kind of more uh, to the metaphysical realm. And I was always in search of more and more and more. Yeah. So I actually met Brian because I uh, saw that he or heard of him because he is a spiritual teacher and he uh, does courses for people. So I started doing courses with him. And uh, two weeks after, I actually sat in my apartment and I saw a massive newspaper article, uh, some satanic church launched in South Africa. And I saw the photo and I saw it was Rian and I'm like, no way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I already knew Rian can do the vast knowledge uh, of the metaphysical realm. And all the training or all the courses that I did, he kind of helped me unlock within myself yeah and i was automatically curious about satanism then as a philosophy and when i read the philosophy after the church opened i was really flabbergasted when i identified myself within the pages of this book and mm -hmm. i could not lie to myself any longer and yes that is kind of how i be became or became aware that i am a satanist so what, what was the one thing that jumped out of you that made you say, okay, I definitely am one? The fact that I always went looking for more and more and more outside of myself, yes. all of the things outside of myself. And when I read Satan, the satanic philosophy, it focuses much, a lot on you as the individual and it brings you back to yourself. Mm. And when I realized all those things that I was looking for outside of myself, that is all within, and its name is Satanism, that is kind of how I identified as a Satanist. So, I mean, Rian, let me ask you a question here then. I mean, you were saying that uh, you were also tired of society uh, blaming Satanism on X, Y, and Z that had nothing to do with the actual belief system and the religion. But don't you think that the name Satanism, even though it's not necessarily the name you came up with, is then misleading because it could have been called something else? Um, it can't be called something else mm -hmm. because Satanism is codified as a religion yes. in the Satanic Bible that was written in 1966. Yeah. So th that is the name of the religion. The problem comes in when a lot of people from other beliefs confuses devil worship with Satanism. Mm. And this is because they don't see the difference again. And they, a lot of people don't even know what the word Satan means. Yes. And I think this is where the problem comes in. And this is why we're educating the public as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anantas, do you feel that when you officially joined the church that you had found a home and you were no longer feeling whatever was missing in your life. Absolutely. I could really feel at home because these were people who were authentic, mm. first of all. They were absolutely themselves. And yes. that was a thing that I struggled to find. I traveled the world uh, for four years, over 25 countries. Yeah. And I struggled to find authentic people. But once I found Rian and the surrounding people, I felt more close to them than I do with my family. Your and way. I realized that this is my, these are my people and this is my family. If I understand correct, do you feel that some of the other religions um, push, push a narrative of being better than, or if you do X, Y, and Z, it, it makes you above others? In this, yes. You know, um, I think that because Satanism is a minority religion and so misunderstood, and there are other religions that are very um, kind of engraved in South Africa and the world, majority religions, they automatically assume that they are above and look down upon people who do not agree mm -hmm. with their way of life. Um, and as a Satanist, we, as Rian has mentioned, we do not recruit people. We allow the freedom of choice. Yeah. Um, I think where it comes in is where when their choices influence 
my life, I have the right to say, no, I do not agree with this. And that is kind of what Satanism has provided me with, uh, with a voice for myself, um, uh, kind of helped me identify myself and ultimately become myself. Do you, uh, Rian, think that, you know, the church or the satanic church um, is almost the opposite of Christianity? So, no, um, because, again, that would be saying that we are anti-Christian. I would rather say we are are post-Christian. So that means we have experienced certain other beliefs, we didn't resonate it, and we left that belief and we took with us what Satan means to us. So we are post that religion. Mm. We are more the religion of the times. Um, If we look at things like science, entertainment, um, innovation, that is all satanic things. Mm. Um, We are already living in a satanic time more than people are realizing. So we are not anti-Christian. We are we are post-Christian, and we are a religion of the time and of the future. Mm. Is there anything um, in the Bible, for example, as in the Christian Bible, that still resonates with you? There is. Mm. Um, there's a beautiful verse in John that says, "Be still, and know that I am God." Mm. And that actually means I as in me, as in it's within. And that was actually from the Bible studies that I've done and from having a theological background. That is the way that that verse was originally written. And then people still thought read it as in that it refers to God as an external. Yes. But it actually means when we are still with ourselves, we will find God within. And that to me is a beautiful, beautiful verse. As it will find God within or also more to do with you are the God of your own life. That is the same thing to us, yes. Yes, yes. yes. I think I understand it much better. Um, um, Nantes, from your side as a member, like uh, what are some of the rituals that you participate in? Well, um, a lot of rituals are based on self-empowerment. So... um, the rituals you do are to empower yourself. Mm. It could be something like taking a bath and just relaxing with some candles next to you with the intention of just releasing the negative energy of the day Mm. or whatever is holding you back. Um, There are rituals that are codified within the Satanic Bible. Yes. Um, So those rituals you can perform uh, to stimulate your mind and to kind of bring your will into a existence. But that is already codified within the satanic Bible. Um, and Satanists are allowed to practice or they are allowed to not practice the rituals. Mm. Um, it really depends from person to person. Mm. And from your side, Rian, um, as the reverend, I mean, what are some of the rituals or the church activities that you preside over? So we do weddings. We, we do satanic weddings, um, which is obviously very different than a traditional wedding. Um, we do unbaptism rituals, meaning that um, some individuals feel that they were baptized as children against their will. Yes. And they want to reverse that. So I perform that. And then the group rituals and ceremonies, I I did perform before lockdown. And then um, since we've been in lockdown, most of those things we stream in a private Facebook group only to our members. So, yeah, um, in in the traditional sense or the way our church's constitution is registered with the Department of Social Development, um, wherever there is a ritual, um, I would perform or preside over that. Mm. But our rituals is not as you would think it to be in a traditional sense where I'm standing on a pulpit and we have people sitting. Um, A satanic ritual is a more fun, um, everybody takes part in it, where it's usually a circle structure where everybody's standing in a circle. So just in terms of, um, you know, your role in the church as the reverend, does the church pay you? Is this your full-time job? 
Well, yes, um, I do get paid for it. But um, I'm also, the, like I said, the co-founder. Yes. And um, I, I still practice the metaphysical career that I have yes. been doing for the last 18 years, which is to do um, psychic work and to do healing. And then I've been focusing a lot on um, training and offering workshops. And that's how, um, for instance, how Nantes met me. I understand. And that's how, how Nantes then recognized you and all those things before joining the church. So Nantes, from your side, uh, maybe just in terms of final words, what would you say the church has done for your life? Well, it has provided me with uh, like-minded people, like-minded individuals, and it has provided me with family. Uh, it has, I think one of the big things that Satanism has done for me is let go of a lot of guilt that I carried mm -hmm. um, because what I've taught, been told was wrong in life. Where I realized that, you know what, it is human nature and it is okay to feel this way. Yeah. So it has freed me, basically, if I can say that in those words. So freed you from the guilt that's associated um, with with certain Christian uh, values and beliefs that were that you were you grew up yes. uh, being taught. Yes. Yes. Can you give me an example of something that you carried a lot of guilt about that now you're like, actually, this is something I embrace. I think. Um, Indulgence instead of abstinence, um, practicing spiritual beliefs where I would re repress a lot of my, let's say, um, desires, um, where Satanism advocates for you to live those desires. And I could really start living um, according to what I really felt inside instead of repressing. Rian, from your side, I mean... Just to be clear, uh, what are some of the misconceptions and myths that people have about the church, the religion, uh, um, what is it, those things that they believe that are absolutely incorrect? So the three things that is the biggest misconceptions out there is number one is that we believe in the devil or that we worship a devil. So that is a big misconception. Number two is that there are sacrifices involved. Yes. So in the Satanic Bible, it clearly states that under no circumstances will a Satanist take a human life. Hmm. So and that, is, that is very clearly stated there. So there's still a lot of misconceptions, and, and these things are projected because of what is written in other religious texts about their own religion, the thing of sacrifice and, or even animal sacrifice. Yeah. So there's absolutely no sacrifices or life that gets taken for the sake of the satanic religion because the satanic religion is about celebrating life, revering life, respecting yeah. life. So it is very unsatanic to kill. Yes. So that is the second thing. The third thing, which we find and have found, especially in the last year, is that people from certain cultural communities and backgrounds think that if they join our church, they are going to become rich overnight or that we are part of the Illuminati or, or something like yes. that. So that is also a very, very big mis misconception. And just because of what is said in cultures about Satanism. Mm -hmm. So people... Um, as, you, as you say, would believe it's devil worship. Um, it's anything related to witch, witchcraft or selling your soul for certain gains in life. Yeah, and it's most certainly not that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I think I, think I have a much better understanding. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming, um, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, saying the satanic church and saying the church of Satan would be two completely different things. Correct. Those are two completely different organizations. Um, the Church of Satan is an American organization yes. that was founded by Andrew Navey in the 60s. Yes. And the South African Satanic Church is us, and we are in South Africa. And our organization is only for South African citizens mm -hmm. um, and people who already identify as a Satanist. Mm -hmm. What are some of the final things that you would like uh, viewers at home to know? Let me start with you, Nantes, as a member. I guess a lot of people think that we are these 
people who hide in dark corners and murder people or kill animals. Yes. Whereas we don't do that at all. We are your neighbors. We are your friends. Yeah. And we are normal people just like you and I. But because of the label and the, miscon the misconceptions that it carries, a lot of people automatically assume the worst when they see you are a Satanist. Um, and I would just like to say we are normal people um, yeah. with a different set of values. We are in your society and we're not here to harm you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Rian, uh, your final words to viewers that you think that they should know. Okay, so I love what Nanta said because that's very true, is that, um, and I want to mention this as well, not all Satanists look like me. Um, the majority of our members are very talented, professional, um, in, in the corporate world, um, and like I mentioned, in the medical field, etc., scientists. So um, I don't, I think it's not about the stereotypes, firstly. Secondly, I want to say that we are not here to convert other people mm. to Satanism. We are simply here to ask that we can practice our religion within our rights, mm. within the laws of this country. And we ask for the same treatment as would, you would treat anybody else yes. that's practicing a religion that's not of your own. Yes, yes. Um, I can't thank the both of you enough for coming through to share and uh, just to clear up some of the myths and misconceptions about what the beliefs are um, about, you know, the church you belong to, but also just about your individual lives and the fact that your desires um, are, or let me say your interest is not about going out to do evil on people, but it's more about um, taking care of your own needs and self. If I've summarized that correctly? Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, yeah. And, and just to clear, Rian, your self-enrichment or self-empowerment, um, you don't push for it to be at the cost of another human being. No. Um, and as it also, if you read the Satanic Bible, again, it will clearly say that responsibility and we don't harm other people and we do not do things that is against another person's yes. will. And that is the things we respect first. Yes. So if another person chooses to do certain things with their body or if they want to dress a certain way, we respect that choice, yes. um, for instance. But yeah, free will is at the top of our beliefs and agenda, and we treat others as they would treat us. Yeah. So if a person treats us with respect, we certainly would do the same. Thank you so much to the both of you for joining us. Thank you, Rian. You are so welcome, and thank you so much for the opportunity and, and the platform that you guys have created. And thank you so much thank to you, Nantes. Thank you for having us. It's been a real pleasure and real fun. Thank you. Hashtag unpacked with Relebukhile. Join us on the socials. What do you think about this conversation? Are there some myths and misconceptions that you had in mind that you now think are cleared up? Not just about Rian as a reverend, but also about the South African satanic church and the religion as a whole. Yes, these are not common. These conversations are taboo. But thank you for joining us for this particular one. Have a good night. Next time on Unpacked. We had, a, we had a great run and the music will live on forever. What was the, the beginning of the end? Groups are not meant to last, really. You can never lie to your audience. Unpacked with Rilebukhile Mabocha. New episodes weekdays at 5.30 p.m. on my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Television edited broadcasts weekdays at 5 p.m. Open up to S3.